Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back again with this week's update on all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the second week of March and we're looking at the releases from the 9th until the 13th. As always we're taking a look at all the physical retail releases, all the low print games up for order, some juicy imports and our community spotlight where you show off your pickups and also how you can win a $20 Play Asia gift voucher. Remember if you want to support this series, leave us a comment with what you're playing in your backlog and what is the most recent addition to your collection. Once again, things have slowed down for me to a bit of a halt in terms of additions so I have haven't added anything to my collection at all. Poor me. Anyways, this week's physical releases. Overpass is releasing this week on March 12th for Europe. North America will have to wait until next week. Anyways, this is a very different take on the racing genre. It's not about how fast you go, but how tactically you can overcome the terrain in front of you. It's supposedly decent if you're a bit hardcore, but how it holds up on the Switch will be interesting to see. My Hero 1's Justice 2 is releasing this week on March 13th. This anime tie-in continues the battle of the first game, as this arena fight is going to be interesting for fans of the series or of the original game. Featuring a decent amount of improvements, bigger roster, bigger attacks, plus reliving big moments from the anime series, I'm sure many people will have their eyes on this one. There's a standard edition as well as a big collector's edition that has a big collector's box, My Hero Academia Shikishi, which is a stupidly difficult way to say a fancy piece of card, there's an LED figurine, steelbook and a keychain. Langrisso 1 and 2 is releasing this week on the 10th of March in America and 13th in Europe. This is a double remake of two old school strategy RPGs that were once a very commendable rival to the Fire Emblem games. You can switch between classic and modern graphical styles and the same with the music. The gameplay is classic as ever and you can find out our full length thoughts in our review which released last week. Hellwarders looks set to release in Europe this week on the 13th. This has been available in Asia in English for a long time now, so it's nice to see this one finally coming to fruition in the West. It's a third person tower defense game. Uh, I believe the US release is next week, so I'll mention it again then. Dead or School has been out in Japan for quite some time and was always one of the more interesting imports available. Considering it had English, it was always going to be a matter of time before a Western publisher came along to pick it up and it was marvellous who have taken up the reins on this one. It's a 2.5D adventure hack and slash, an incredibly quirky game. It's super rough around the edges, but I had my fun with it and you can check out my review from a long time ago to find out more about it if you want to. 13th of March for Europe. Sadly, North Americans aren't getting this, at least not from Marvelous or Exceed, so if you want to import it, links are down below. A quick mention to our North American friends, Black Future 88 is finally getting a release over there on the 10th, I believe. A cool action roguelike shooter that's well worth a look. We reviewed it when it released digitally quite a while ago. Also, I swear this is the last time I'm ever, ever going to mention Coffee Crisis, but it may be releasing this week. I don't know. I don't care anymore. Right, that's it for Western Retail. Let's move on to the low print releases. A Soul Android Cactus Plus is Super Rare Games' latest release, up for order on March 12th. It's an interesting arcade twin stick shooter for up to four people to play together to take on the levels. It looks decent and reviewed very well indeed, but like almost every single Super Rare Games release, I'm just not feeling this one for me personally. One that I am feeling, however, is from One Print Games. They are getting into gear for their second low print release, It'll Do. Yes, the first game is being put up for pre-order now, with plans to ship on March 31st. This is a bit of an oldie, but still a very nice game indeed that I played on my Wii U and enjoyed it quite a lot. Fans of action-adventure puzzle games will enjoy this one, especially since it has the word Zelda written all over it. It's worth noting that it is a collector's edition, so it comes with plenty of extra goodies, including a keychain, booklet, cards, sticker, and soundtrack CD. God, I love a good soundtrack CD. As an extra note, if you didn't know, the second game already has a physical on the Switch thanks to Nicholas. I want to mention B-Side Games. Last week I should have told you about their latest release, Cat Quest. If you didn't know B-Side Games, they are basically the Japanese equivalent of Limited Runner Super Rare Games, and they do similar titles, like they did a collector's edition of Golf Story over there in Japan. Yes, Cat Quest has released here, but this is a special edition of theirs and has a lovely box, cards, and cassette tape soundtrack. Plus, they have started to ship internationally. Okay, let's move on to imports, but before that, just a heads up that all the games mentioned here today, if any take your fancy, then in the description and pinned comment, we have links below as to where you can find them for yourself to purchase. They're affiliate links, so any purchase that you make using those links will help out the Switch Watch team massively to keep improving the show for you guys. You're always fantastic, and we really appreciate you very, very much. If you do want to use our links, don't forget to type in the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV. That's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV, to get 5% off every physical item you purchase from Play Asia. Don't forget to still use our links though. If you don't use our links, then it doesn't support us, so please don't forget that. 
Human Resource Machine may be one of the most belated retail releases in history. What was basically a launch title for the Switch's eShop is getting a physical release in Japan just now. This is a game for those fans of puzzle games and programming problems. Having played this myself, I can attest that I'm just too dumb for this one. But it does have an appeal to a niche audience. English should be on board, and also, by the way, it seems to include the game's sequel, 7 Billion Humans. March 12th for this. Bookbound Brigade is a fine Metroidvania-style game featuring many historical figures banding together to unlock new abilities. This flew under the radar when it released digitally not long ago. We reviewed it and gave it a nice, solid recommendation. But many people didn't check that out, so be sure to do so to see if this is up your alley or not. Nanpure 10,000 plus Puzzle Nomado is a quad pack of puzzle games, a bit of Picross, a bit of Sudoku and some other stuff. I know for a fact that three of these games at least have English on the cartridge, although I'm not entirely sure about the one with a big focus on Japanese characters. Sadly, we missed this one from our big import video, but we'll be sure to add it in when we update it next time. Winning Post 9 2020 is yet another entry in the long-running Japanese series. It is part of Koei Tecmo's horse racing game series, sister series to something you may be slightly more familiar with, G1 Jockey, which I remember seeing back in the day on the PS2. Anyways, that series is more about racing, while this one, Winning Post, is a series more about the management side of things. Sadly, as curious as I am about this one, there's no English in this release. Winning Post 9 releases on March 12th. Collar Cross Malice is getting a standard edition as well as a collector's edition this week in Japan. This is a visual novel that I don't believe has English. The collector's edition includes a book of short stories as well as an acrylic stand. I don't know why, but they seem to be becoming more and more popular. Toaware No Palm Refrain Deluxe is a Notami visual novel that comes in both a standard edition as well as a collector's edition. No English on this as far as I'm aware. Only interesting thing about this one is that it's being published by Capcom. Not their usual sort of game. Before we move on to the community spotlight, I just want to point out a video I made last week telling you all the physical games exclusive to Japan or Asia that have English on the cartridge. There are 81 of them, it's a beast of a video and I put a lot of work into it, so do us a favour and give it a watch if you missed it. Alright, the community spotlight where you show off your physicals, plus if you get featured you'll be in with a chance of winning a $20 Play Asia gift voucher at the end of the month. We had a lot of entries this week, and it was quite a bit of an effort to squeeze in as many people as possible, so, uh, you know, I get kind of tetchy when we reach 15 minutes, guys, okay? So, Marion showed off these additions to the library, three excellent games, all recommended by myself, and I especially love that little notice telling people to buy Hatsune Miku. Do it! It's really good! Watch my review! Retro Games showed off this picture of the goodies given away at select stores for Metro Redux. Some nice pin badges, a poster, cards, and also the best thing about this is the Switch Watch mug. I think he's like one of only like three people who have bought this, so he is a legend. God of Resin showed off two lovely pictures. Firstly, of this nice eclectic mix. The new Metro as well as two essential imports, Okami and Super Robot Wars X. And in the second photo, he did a little unboxing of Fate Extella Link with that nice cloth picture and some extra goodies. Benny Kong showed off these February pickups. I thought you said you're supposed to be slowing down, man. Anyways, these are all excellent releases. Limited run, as much as I hate their postage costs, always seem to get the cream of the crop. Save Yourself showed off these pickups. Still waiting for opinions on Galaxy, guys. Give me an excuse to add it to my list or not. The other games, well, all extremely solid quality stuff. Bruno Silva had a couple of pictures, which you can tell he's a man who likes a good JRPG. Can't blame him, all three are quality titles, and I think Atelier Riser deserves a bit more love. Dark King Cooper, can I just say that I'm loving those purple bedsheets? That's not a joke, I want them. Uh, I believe he picked up these during a liquidation sale at GameStop. No, not the bedsheets, the games. And some cool stuff was snatched up. You don't see many people with Penny Punching Princess, a very unique title, very uh, NIS America style game. Probably overpriced at launch, but if you can get it for like $20 or so, it's a nice quirky addition, I would say. Alexander showed off these additions. Once again, we have another gigantic army. I swear we must have helped publicize this game more than anywhere else in the world. We should probably get a thanks from the developers or something. Troy wanted to show off these games, Warriors Orochi 4 Ultimate, a very recent release packed with an insane amount of content for those who love to grind. You know who you are. Our main man Craig Morgan showed off this pickup, Darksiders Genesis, a spin-off of the series and a very nicely done one at that. We did get a review code for this, but unfortunately it was on the day of release, which is never a great incentive to put the effort into a review. But what we've heard, it seems like a decent port with a few minor issues. Poopkin showed off these editions. The archival edition seems to be very popular, at least with our audience. I think I'm like the only person who doesn't have it at this point. 
Christopher Lorden showed off this picture, some lovely games, all quality. As a sucker for imports, I do love that Dragon Quest trilogy, of course. Tommy Mayer showed off these nice games, some slightly more obscure titles, but quality nonetheless. And there it is, Unravel 2. I mentioned it last week that I had no idea this had a physical release. I guess it's like waiting for buses, non come for ages until two come along at once. Any more people have this? The Pecking Bird showed off this picture. I am Setsuna, the grandfather of all Switch imports. It was really the first one that could be considered for import because it was exclusive to Japan at launch, but it did have English. Genius. Jaro showed off this picture. Oh yes, mad respect for having Taiko no Tatsujin with the drum. Plus, always need to give a thumbs up to anyone who has Onimusha physically. John Weston showed off these imports, some psycho goodness, as well as Saivaria, or however you're supposed to say it. Another nice shooter. Uh, and I can see this guy is a man loving the retro style good stuff. Craig N wanted to show off some more obscure titles, and you really don't get much more obscure than Windstorm, the English cover from Scandinavia. I'm not an expert in these regional European releases, but it's fair to say that they are not easy to get a hold of. Jatin wanted to add some colour to our life with this nice showing of Rumbo Deluxe Edition. I'm just a source, sure of this eye-popping collection, Bridge Constructor Portal is not one that you see often, published by Game Fairy, a more obscure low-print company. Also, that Mega Man box set makes me weep every time. Dustin showed off these editions, a fan of the odd visual novel I see. Root Letter is a really good one, the humour is a little bit all over the place, but the story fascinated me in the short time that I've played it so far. Sorry, I don't know how to say your name, Arsundor, it sounds like you're from Middle Earth, I don't know. But I have to just point out Retro City Rampage, because at one point this was probably the most expensive Switch game to add to your collection if you missed its low print run. Nowadays, I have no idea about its price, I didn't look at the prices on eBay to be honest. Paul Pope sent in this picture, great stuff, but I just want to mention James Pond and Max Curse of the Brotherhood. I can't vouch for America, but if you're in the UK and you're a collector of all things Switch, check out Argos. Go to Argos because they pretty much have dibs on all the properly weird physical releases. Well, I say physical. They are codes in boxes, which is crap, of course, but if you're truly hardcore, I wouldn't want you to miss out on the properly weird stuff that they have there. Like, very obscure stuff. Fluttershout has a very Japanese taste to these games, and I can't blame you because they are mostly quality. Some top tier stuff, fans of big booby anime games will enjoy most of these titles for sure. Alright guys, we're running out of time, so let's power through the rest. These couple of pictures from Jonathan, who is a lovely guy, double serving of Ultracore. Blasphemous from Survivor, a nice healthy collection from Nick. Mr. Snake Eater sent in this large collection, excellent. Ninja Saviors from Chocoloco James. A lot of Nicholas goodies from Mansfield Bear, and oh, okay, I think that's it. I think we squeezed everyone in just about. Thanks, ladies and gents. I really appreciate you sending in your pictures. If you want to send in your recent editions, either one game or five games or 20 games, it doesn't matter because it's not a competition, except when it is a competition, because you can be in with the chance of winning $20 Play Asia voucher for your next purchase. Don't worry. The winner is chosen at random. Even if you only send in a picture of Troll and I, you have just as much chance of winning as anybody else. So send me a picture on Twitter over at So What About Game. Please DM me. Don't message Juan or anything, okay? DM me so I can keep track of it. Or you can email it to us at contact us at switchwatch.co.uk. Just make sure you start the email with Community Spotlight so that I don't miss it. Plus, we have a Discord, which is always a nice way to have a talk with you guys. And you can send your pictures over there. The Discord server link is below. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physicals. What has taken your fancy this week? Be sure to let us know. And check out last week's episode in case you missed it. Check out last week's review of Langurisa and my massive list of all exclusive Japanese or Asian physicals that have English on the cartridge. A lot of time and effort went into that one, so please check it out. We'll see you guys over there. Take care.